Hello, it's Mr Neil here, and in this video I'm going to review the Database Design and Development Unit from National 5 Computing Science. In this unit, we are required to analyse, design, implement, test and evaluate solutions to database problems. You can find the full specification for this unit in the National 5 Computing Science course specification, which is available on the SQA website. Before we get into the crux of database design and development, it is important to understand what a database is. A database is an organised collection of records holding data so that it can be stored and accessed quickly. There are three main parts to a database. The file. This is an organised collection of records on a particular topic. So the example on screen is an organised collection of information about students. Within our file we will have records and a record is all the information on one single person or thing. So in this case, our record is all the information about a student. Then we move on to fields, and fields is one specific item of data in a record. Now, as we are talking about databases, and our databases may handle personal information, we need to consider the General Data Protection Regulation. GDPR, or the Data Protection Act 2018, is about protecting personal data of individuals. Any information about you that can be used to directly identify you is personal data. For example, your name, date of birth and address. As a data subject, you have a number of rights. These include the right to access your personal information and the right to have your personal information corrected. Businesses and companies that handle personal data have a number of responsibilities. These include ensuring that personal data is stored securely, is accurate and is not kept for longer than necessary. Prior to building our databases, we need to analyse the problem to understand what our database must do. The end user requirements are the tasks the user wish to perform in our database. For example, if we were creating a database for a doctor's surgery, the receptionist may want the database to be able to output appointment letters for patients, and the actual doctors might want to update patient records. The functional requirements should relate to the tasks that the database will perform, usually the searching and sorting. Functional requirements may also provide the detail around the data that must be held in the database. For a doctor's surgery, the data that might be stored could be the patient's NHS number, their first name, surname, date of birth and address. When we're designing our database, we think of entities and attributes. In database design, entities represent what will become tables during implementation. An entity could be a physical object, for example, a book or a person, or something abstract, like a hairdress appointment or holiday details. Example on the screen of an entity is a student. Attributes are the information that we hold about the entity, and during implementation, these will become the fields. So we are holding the first name, last name, date of birth, address, and postcode of our student. We can also describe our entities and attributes in a wee table like this. Each entity requires a primary key. A primary key is the attribute that is used to uniquely identify each occurrence of an entity. So if we think about each student within our student table, how do we uniquely identify that student? Well, we give them a student ID. And if we have a school table, how do we uniquely identify a school? Well, we give them a school reference. At National 5, we will work normally with two tables in our databases, and these two tables will have a relationship between them. And this relationship shows how two entities are related to each other. So if we think about student and school, how are these two tables related? A relationship always starts with the phrase one. So in this case, one student attends how many schools? One or many? Well, it's one school. If we look at the relationship from the other direction, one school has one or many students. In this case, it is many students. And this gives us a one-to-many relationship. We can then draw that relationship in between our entities. The crow's foot here represents the many side of the relationship. And you'll see that the crow's foot and the word many are attached to the student table. The bar crossing the relationship line represents the one side of the relationship. A foreign key is the primary key attribute from one entity and a related entity. The purpose of the foreign key is to establish the relationship between two entities. 
So in this case, our foreign key is either student ID in the school table or the school reference in the student table, and this will secure the link. The foreign key always goes in the entity at the many side of the relationship. So school reference goes into the student table. This now gives us an entity relationship diagram. The entity relationship diagram is a graphic representation of the entities within a database and is used to illustrate the relationship that exists between two or more entities. You'll see that the primary key is underlined and the foreign key has an asterisk next to it. You may see an entity relationship diagram presented in this manner or in this manner where the attributes surround the entity. Data dictionaries are created during the design phase to define the structure of a database. Data dictionaries contain the following metadata or data about data. We have the name of each entity, the name of all attributes associated with each entity, the type of data that will be stored in each attribute, the size of each attribute, taking account of the overall file size, an indication of the primary and foreign keys, and any validation rules that are applied to the attributes. Let's have a quick look at a data dictionary. You can see that this data dictionary contains all the information described in the previous slide. A database can store different types of data. We can have text, which are words, numbers, or other characters. We have numbers, whole or decimal. Then we can also store date and time. And lastly, Boolean, which is used to store either true or false. Validation is used to ensure that the data within our database is more accurate. There are different types of validation checks that we can perform. Presence check is where the information must be entered into an attribute or a field. For example, when signing up to social media, you must enter your email address. Field length restricts the number of characters that could be typed in. For example, ensuring that a phone number is only ever 11 characters long. A range check makes sure the data is entered within certain limits. For example, if you're entering the rating for a movie or a film, then you can only enter the numbers between 1 and 5. Restricted choice limits what the user can enter by restricting their choice to a list of acceptable values. For example, when deciding on a guidance teacher for a new pupil at your school, you can only pick from a list of actual guidance teachers. Once we've designed the structure of the database, it is important to take time to design any queries that may need to be implemented later. At this stage, we do not include specific SQL. We're only looking for an indication of the fields, tables, criteria and sort order that would be required to perform a query. For example, if we were to find all schools in Midlothian with more than 900 students, the type of query is going to be select, the tables that require are school, the fields are name, head teacher and phone number, and then we dictate the criteria and the sort order. And the same again for a delete query. Once we have designed our database, we can then implement our database using our chosen database management system. This could be something like Microsoft Access or MySQL. Reference integrity ensures the value of a primary key in one table has a matching value in the corresponding foreign key. Referential integrity means that the relationship between the tables must always be consistent. Any foreign key must agree with the primary key in the linked table. For example, here we have our student table and our linked school table. There are a couple of issues here with regards to referential integrity. Patrick Stewart attends Goakley Moss High School. However, as the school here is the foreign key, it must match with an associated primary key. And there is no Goakley Moss High in the school table. Another example of where referential integrity takes part would be, for example, if Roslyn High School was to be deleted, then the information about Catherine and Ben would also be deleted. Once we've implemented our database, we can then use structured query language to perform queries. SQL is used to allow developers to interrogate the data held in a database. We're going to continue using our student school database in these examples. Firstly, a select statement is used to select data from the database. A select statement contains four different parts. Select, identifying the fields that we want to display. From, the table that we are selecting information from. Where, the conditions that we want to be met and then order by. How do we want the results to be sorted? So in this example here, we are selecting the first name, surname, date of birth for all students who are in the reg class 3S1, and the list will be presented to us in surname in ascending order, which is alphabetical. In this second example, we are selecting the school name from the school table 
for all schools that are in the Midlothian local authority and with more than 800 pupils. The results will be sorted in descending order of students and then alphabetical order of student name should two schools have the same number of students. We may need to perform an SQL select query with an equijoin and this is where data from two tables can be combined. For example, here we are selecting the first name, the surname and school name for all students who attend a school in Dumfries and Galloway. As we are pulling information from both the student table and the school table, an equijoin is required. And an equijoin is where we state the primary key of one table equals the foreign key in the other table. The insert statement is used to add records into a table. An insert statement includes two parts, an insert into stating the table that we're inserting into and values specifying the values that we are entering. In this example here, we're adding a new student into the student table and we have all the information about that student. In this second example, we're adding a new school into our school table. However, we do not have all the information about the new school. Therefore, we have to specify the fields that we are inserting information into. An update statement changes the data and records that already exist. An update statement includes three parts. Update, set, where. Update states the name of the table that we are changing. Set is the new value. And where is the condition of the record that we want to update. In this example, we are changing the head teacher of the school with the reference 57381. A delete query removes records from a database. There are two parts to a delete query. Delete and where. The delete states the name of the table that we're deleting information from and where is the condition of the records that we want to delete. If we do not include any conditions, then we will delete all records within the database. With update and delete queries, it is important that you're sure you're changing and deleting the correct records as update and delete queries cannot be reversed. That moves us nicely onto testing and evaluation. When testing queries, it's a good idea to document expected results and actual results. You can then compare the expected results with the actual results to see if they are the same. Queries should be evaluated for the accuracy of the output. Results of test runs can be used to judge if the database provides accurate output for the functions identified at the analysis stage. A database is deemed to be fit for purpose if it meets the requirements determined at the analysis stage. Just because a query performs the function that you want to perform doesn't mean that it will cause further errors elsewhere in the database. It is always important to think about the repercussions for performing a query. In this video, I reviewed the Database Design and Development Unit from National 5 Computing Science, touching upon analysis, design, implementation, testing and evaluation. If there are any aspects of this unit that you're not sure of, then I recommend that you undertake further revision. There are loads of resources available to you to support your revision. This includes resources available from your own classroom teacher and on the SQA, BBC Bite Size and Scholar websites.